Hey awak, awak yang tu lah. Jangan lupa subscribe channel kita. Tanda sokongan. Terima kasih. Hai, Assalamualaikum. Jom kita revise sambil berehat. Sambil berehat pun, kita boleh belajar tahu dengan tengah handphone. Apa tunggu lagi? Jom kita mula. Okay, example number 7. So, here we have... 1,400 kg car is going around a unbanked curve. Okay, so untuk syllabus awak, okay, tiada soalan bank curve. So, all the questions is related to unbanked curve only. Okay, so the question state that, okay, the speed, okay, the recommended speed of the car is 10 meter per second. Okay, so maknanya uh, dia punya recommended speed, dia punya speed limit sign tu mungkin 10 meter per second. Okay, so the radius of curvature of the path is 20 meter and the coefficient of static friction between the road and the rubber tires is given mu equal to 0 0.6. Okay, so now here we want to calculate what is the frictional force on the car. Okay, so number one. So, kalau you hafal formula ni, ada yang kata dia hafal kan? V is equal to mu RG. So, kalau you hafal tanpa you faham, okay, uh, free body diagram dia. So, how to calculate the frictional force? So, equation for frictional force is equal to, okay, mu SN. Alright, so normal force. So, how to find normal force? So, look at the free body diagram here. So, let's say this is the unbanked curve. So, this is the car. Alright. And the free body diagram. So, we have normal, weight and also the frictional force. Okay. Alright. So, now based on this diagram, we can find the normal force from total Fy equal to 0. So, N plus negative W equal to 0. So, N is equal to Mg. Okay. So, now you can find the static frictional force. Mu S N kita tadi adalah Mg, right? So, substitute all the values. Okay. So, kita akan kira. Okay, static frictional force is equal to 8240.4 Newton. Okay. So, this is the answer for number 1. Okay. And then number 2. Okay, so what happen if the driver ignores the speed limit sign and travels at 20 meter per second? Instead of 10 meter per second, okay, the car travel at 20 meter per second. Kalau kita kira pun, okay, the maximum velocity yang kereta itu boleh ada, boleh gerak. Okay, kita tengok eh, by using this equation. Ha, mana dapat equation ni? Kita derive lah. Okay, ha, dalam video sebelum ni saya ada tunjuk. Alright. So, V maximum, okay, kita masukkan nilainya, 0 0.6 times R, so R is equal to 20 times 9.81. Okay, so the answer should be, cuba kira, so 0 0.6 times 20, okay, ha, ini pun dia dah, V maximum ni kalau kita kira 10.8 eh, 10.8 meter per second, okay. Uh, paling laju dia boleh bawa adalah 10.8 meter per second. Alright. So that's why the recommended speed of 10 meter per second. Okay. 10 meter per second. Okay. Tapi kalau dia bawa lebih. So what happen to the car? So kita boleh cakap apa? The drivers cannot make successful turn at the corner. Okay. Uh, kita tulislah. The drivers. Okay. Cannot. Make Okay, successful Apa? Uh, turn At the Corner Since V maximum Is equal to 10.8 meter per second Okay So, if the driver Travels at 20 meter per second Nah, boleh tambah lah If the driver travels at 20 meter per second Apa? If the driver, uh, if the, okay, driver uh, travels at 20 meter per second, okay, so the car, uh, kita boleh cakap apa, the car, okay, begins to skid, okay, 
Okay, on the, on the curve. Boleh eh? Ha, so, dia mungkin akan terbabas lah. Sebab dia bergerak terlalu laju. 20 meter per second. Sedangkan kita kira tadi maximum V should be 10.8 meter per second sahaja. Boleh eh? Alright, good. Alright, number 3. Calculate the maximum safe speed for the car travelling around the curve. If the road surface is wet and the coefficient of static friction between the road and the rubber tyres now is 0 0.4. So, we can straightly use this equation. Okay, very easy. So, V maximum. Okay, waktu hujan kan, jalan basah. So, bila jalan basah, licin, the coefficient of static friction dia, dia bagi sini 0 0.4 times the radius is 20 meter times 9.81. Okay. So, V maximum dia, kalau kita kira, you akan dapat 8.86. Okay. Let's say lah usually, the car move 10 meter per second dekat jalan tu, tapi waktu hujan tak bolehlah bawa dengan kelajuan yang sama. Kena kurangkan sikit. So, bila kita kira, waktu hujan, if the coefficient of friction between the tyre and the road is 0 0.4, therefore the maximum speed okay, for the car to travel around the curve should be 8.86 meter per second. Okay? Alright. So, finish example number 7. So, here example number 8. So, we have an object. So, this is also the conical pendulum, right? So, we have an object is tied to the end of the cord of length 0 0.5 meter okay and world in a horizontal circle as shown in the figure below all right calculate the centripetal acceleration speed of the ball and time to travel around the circle twice okay so this is very interesting but before that we need to draw all the forces on the object so we're gonna have weight okay and then tension t okay and another one, okay, in this case, given that the length, angle and no R. So, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, R is the center. So, R tak ada. Okay, remember eh, relationship between R, L and theta. Uh, mereka ni ada hubungan yang special. Ah, Okay, so angle theta, 30 degree. Okay, kalau soalan bagi L, L eh, dia bukan bagi tension eh, 0 0.5 meter. Length partner dia dengan length, iaitu radius. So, radius boleh kira tak? Boleh. Boleh lah. Uh, boleh. Okay. So, we can use sine 30 degree is equal to R kita tak tahu kan. Kita kalau kita nak kira R over L lah. Ha, macam tu. Okay. So, we can find R is equal to L sine theta 0 0.5 sine 30 degree. Okay, ingat eh, relationship antara R dengan L ni, uh, kita boleh combinekan mereka macam tu. Boleh eh? Okay, so you akan dapat situ adalah 0 0.23 meter. Okay? Okay, so now we want to find the centripetal acceleration. So based on this diagram, you can see that centripetal acceleration should be in this direction. Okay, towards to the center. Okay, but we need to resolve first T into TY and TX. Okay, so from the free body diagram, you can see that the direction of TX is the same direction as AC. So now angle, if here is 30 degree, so here should be 30 degree as well. Alright, okay. So, we can write the equation of total Fxc. So, total Fc, ah, Fc in x component since the direction of AC is to the right. So, Mac, so we want to find this one, AC. Okay, so we can write Tx, the only force that is same direction with AC is Tx equal to Mac. Saya tulis satu-satu eh. So, awak pun kenalah tulis satu-satu. Okay. So, Tx, kita dah resolve tadi. Tx is equal to T sin 30 degree. T sin 30 degree. Ty is equal to T cos 30 degree. 
Okay, sebab TY ni duduk sebelah angle ni. Okay, so, siapa yang duduk sebelah angle? Cos. Siapa yang jauh daripada angle? Sin. Okay, so dia akan jadi T sin 30 degree equal to MAC. Alright, so look at here we cannot solve for AC. Okay, since we don't have tension here. So I will let this as equation number one. Boleh eh? So equation number two, okay, it's come from total Fy equal to zero. So we have Ty upward, so positive, plus negative W downward is equal to zero. Okay, so Ty is T cos 30 degree equal to mg. Okay, so now T cos 30 equal to mg. Kalau soalan tu bagi nilai mass, sebenarnya kita boleh cari T. Ha, T is equal to berapa, you kira you dapat, you boleh masukkan dalam sini. Tetapi, sebab soalan tak bagi mass of the object. So, we still have another unknown. So, you cannot solve for second equation. So, I will let this as second equation. Apa yang saya buat, okay, in order to cancel tension. So, equation number one, okay, divide equation number two. Okay, sebab kita nak cancelkan T dengan M tu. Boleh eh? So, saya akan tulis T sin 30 degree equal to MAC. Okay, divide equation number two T cos 30 degree so over mg so the trick dekat situ m dia tak bagi so we can cancel and remember in mathematics sin theta over cos theta is equal to tangent ok tangent 30 degree is equal to ac over g therefore ac is equal to ha, kita nak cari ac ni g tangent 30 degree so, substitute G is equal to 9.81 meter per second squared times tangent 30 degree. So, AC you akan dapat 5 meter per second squared. Okay. Jadi, untuk soalan conical pendulum ni, ada yang tanya kan, kalau dia dah hafal, macam mana? Okay, kalau you tengok dalam nota awak kan, you ada equation V kan, V equal to square root RG tangent theta. Kan dia kata dia cari R, dia ada G, tangent theta, dia cari V. And then AC is equal to V squared over R. So dia dah dapat V, cuba kita cari eh. V is equal to square root, R kita dah ada tadi 0 0.23 times 9.81 times tangent 30 degree. In any case yang student dia hafal eh. Dia hafal after all the derivation yang kita buat ini tadi, ini semua ni. Sebenarnya dia dapat tahu V is equal to square root RG tangent theta. Okay. Boleh tak ada masalah kalau you hafal dan you ingat. Okay. Tapi adakah awak faham derivation itu? So kita perlu faham eh. Ha. Sebab mungkin terlalu banyak perkara yang you hafal. Takut dia tertukar-tukar. And then dalam exam you tak sure. So at least you boleh derive semula. Okay. So V you akan dapat 1.07 meter per second. So, you pun kira V daripada yang you dah hafal. Saya so, tak kata salah eh. So, when you substitute V here in order to find centripetal acceleration. Okay. So, you akan masuklah. Uh, kalau guna cara ni, dia sebenarnya menjawab soalan B dulu. Speed dulu dia dah jawab 1.07. Alright. And AC, dia masukkan nilai lah. Okay. And R is 0 0.23. So, you akan dapat 4.98 meter per second squared. Tak ada masalah. Betul juga. Okay, maknanya dia dah menjawab soalan B dulu. Tapi kalau kita buat satu-satu daripada total FC equal to MAC, total FY, kita derive and then kita dapat AC. Okay, sebenarnya kita faham soalan tersebut. So, untuk jawab soalan B, dah tak ada masalah lah. AC is equal to V squared over R. So, in order to find V, it's equal to square root AC times R. Kan? Ah, So, kalau kita masukkan dalam equation, so dia akan jadi V is equal to AC kita dah ada 5 times 0 0.23. So V dia kita akan dapat 1.07. Ini cara yang saya jawab lah. Okay saya aa, tak hafal semua benda. Kalau kadang kita hafal. Tapi dalam exam V equal to square root RG tangent theta ni dia tak jadi macam ni. 
Kan dia jadi pelik-pelik jadinya. Okey. Jadi macam mana kita nak fahamkan conical pendulum? Kita cuba fahamkan macam mana kita derive equation based on the free body diagram. Okey. So C pula. Okay, time to travel around the circle twice. Okay, kalau period capital T is the time taken to complete one, one circle ataupun one revolution. Kali ini dia nak masa untuk complete dua kali, dua round. Okay, so untuk kira dua kali, kita kira sekali dululah. One round, one round berapa? Okay, so kita tulis kat sini. Ha, Allah hai. Sekejap eh. Saya turun kat bawah. Okay. So C. So C. So in order to find T. Since we have V. So saya boleh guna formula V is equal to 2 pi R over T. Ingat eh. Ha, macam mana V equal to 2 pi R over T ni? Asalnya adalah V equal to S over T. So S. Untuk one complete circle. Lilitan bulatan circumference of circle. 2 pi R. Over capital T. Uh, kalau complete satu circle, lilitan bulatannya adalah okay, the distance travel by the object should be 2 pi r. That's why 2 pi r over capital T. Alright, so next we can find T is equal to 2 pi r over V. Capital T adalah time taken to travel one revolution. Okay, so 2 pi r, so we want to find T right. So T substitute lah 2 pi r is 0.23. V tadi kita dah kira, V kita berapa tadi? 1.07. So, T you akan dapat 1.35 seconds. This is for one revolution. Tapi kalau nak dua kali round, berapa? Okay, therefore, okay, uh, time taken. Okay, time taken to travel. Okay, around. The circle twice, okay, is equal to 2T, okay, which is equal to, berapa tu? 1.35 times 2, so 2.7, 2.7 seconds, okay, alright, so finish example number 8, okay.